What's going on guys? Kenny here from 619 Guitars and Gear and today we are going to finally get into a review about my 5153. It is the LBXS 15 watt lunchbox tube head from EVH. So let's jump into it. Alright guys, so we're sitting here with my 5153. I uh, just want to talk about a few things. I've had it for a little over a month now. Uh, I apologize for this video being a little late. Uh, just got caught up with life, you know how it is. And doing other videos. And uh, But here we are. So, just want to talk about specs. My overall opinion. I did put together a little small sound snippet, if you will. Uh, it's more a just uh, so you can get an idea of how it sounds and how the EQ reacts to adjustment and just how it overall responds and everything. It's not so much of a dialing a tone in or anything like that because to me it's almost pointless to do that just because everyone's tone is so different and there's so many variables. So uh, I mean I just wanted to give you a basic idea of the sounds that it's going to come out of this thing. So don't you know, judge the tone. Oh, that sounds like crap because we're not really shooting for dialing in a good tone. Um, I just really wanted to just show you how it responds to adjusting and everything like that. Uh, we used a Randall cab with a uh, two vintage 30 Celestians in it, mic'd up with a single Sure SM57, and then... Uh, Really no post EQing, no adding or anything or subtracting. I just did a low high cut, uh, which is normal just to filter out some of the um, some of the noise you don't need in there. And that's really it. But uh, we'll talk about some specs and then I'll show you the demo. My overall feelings and opinion. Um, I think it's a really great little amp. Uh, this is my first tube head, so... I really can't say too much, you know, I can base it off of what I think so far and I really like it and it does everything I need. Uh, as far as gain, I bought a Ibanez Tube Screamer and ended up uh, selling it because I didn't need it because out of the box this thing puts out plenty of gain for me. I uh, didn't really have to get an overdrive or anything like that because to me it was just good enough uh, to dial in the tone that I prefer. Uh, I love the specs on this thing. I, I love the whole 15 watt and the quarter power mode, especially that we're in a small little room studio. For the sound demo, I did bring it out into my bigger uh, main studio just so we can crank it up and try to get you know more true, true volume out of it. It's hard to mic up a cab when you're playing at such a low volume. I feel like you're not getting that good sound out of it. So uh, we did do that for this video. And uh, overall, yeah, I like, I love it so far. I uh, can't say anything bad about it just because, like I said, I've never really, I've never played on any other tube heads. This is my first tube head. I've, I don't know much about the world of tube amps just besides, you know, watching videos and what other people have said. But so far, I really love it. And I've always been a solid state guy. And for my first amp entry into the tube world i'm super excited and i don't think i'm ever going back because i just love that true tone you get out of it i've always been like a solid state with a you know distortion pedal i had like a, a boss gt10 effects processor and just for the new age i just felt like it was getting it just had such a digital sound that i wanted to you know move it on up and uh Super happy that I can get a great distortion, great tone out of just a head, no pedals needed. I have a Boss NS2 noise suppressor, and that's it. And honestly, I don't even need that because this thing's really, really quiet. So real quick, we'll talk about some specs, and then we'll uh, we'll do the demo for you guys. 
All right, so real quick, we'll go over some basic specs of the head. We'll talk about the overall size and weight of it, and then we'll talk about everything on here in the faceplate, as well as the internals and the back of the amp. So size-wise, you're coming in at 12.5 inches long. You are 6 inches deep and then 7 inches high, coming around 15 pounds. So it is a nice, small, compact amp, hence why they call it the lunchbox head. Uh, compared to like my Fender MH head or the Randall that I have, definitely tiny uh, and nice and light. Doing load in and load out with this thing will be a nice breeze for everyone. Uh, I used to hate carrying that giant head. And uh, yeah, definitely a, a back breaker. This thing's nice and compact. They do sell a carrying bag for it, I believe. Uh, but I'll probably, this thing's almost actually small enough. You could probably get like a nice full size ammo box or something and build a, a nice foam case for it inside so uh definitely nice and small packs a huge punch for the size of this thing i was blown away being that bringing it out into my studio for the first time was the first time actually getting to crank it up i was blown away with the volume this thing put out even on quarter power mode we'll get to that whole quarter power mode thing uh when we turn it around here uh so on the face here you have your uh your input which is quarter inch obviously and next to that, you're going to have your channel selection button, and that is going to be for each channel. You have two channels, uh, clean and then full burn, which is your distortion channel, but they call it full burn, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, and then you have your knob. So you're going to have a piggybacked chicken head style knob for your gain. And then the same with the volume. And now that's going to have a separate controls for your volume and gain for each channel. Um, the inner knob is going to be for your clean, and then the outer is going to be for your distortion. Same with the volume. Uh, they do share an EQ, your low, mid, and high, and then the presence. Uh, another thing new for this head, for this model, is the internal LEDs. When you're on the distortion channel, you're going to have the red LEDs. Kind of has like that cool Star Wars look. And then the green is going to be for the clean you can also turn the leds off if you'd want to why you'd want to i don't know uh only thing i have to say about the leds i wish you could turn the leds on when the power of the amp wasn't on that's just my opinion i think it'd be pretty cool just to have it on when you're just hanging out or whatnot i'm sure there's a reason for it but there is a button here on the side that's hidden you need like a little small tip screwdriver or something to uh be able to turn it off but you can turn the leds off uh so that's pretty much everything on the face here. You're going to have your power indicator and then your nice badges, uh, nice, nicely made strong dual cage around all the internals. You're going to have your nice vinyl handle. So all that's pretty nice. And real quick, let's flip this thing around and we'll go over everything on the back. All right. So in the back, uh, you have your power plug obviously uh, that's the typical amp style cable uh, next to that you're going to have your fuse and then you're going to have your power on switch uh, which is pretty cool i love how it's like the toggle style switch um, now you're going to have next to that your operate and standby and then you're going to have this is one of my favorite features your full power or quarter power mode so you can turn it on up to your full 15 watts or you can turn it down to where you get uh around four watts they say so in a small studio environment like i'm in right now you can turn it down to quarter power mode and this thing is not using barely any power and it's still going to have a great sound even at a low volume you don't have to crank it up to really get that that sound that a tube amp has um and then you're going to have a amp bias, which is to adjust the tubes, which obviously I don't suggest doing. It uh, suggests in the manual to definitely have a, techni a technician do that, which I don't really know anything about that. Um, and then you're going to have a quarter inch send and return, which is, you know, typical. And your foot switch input, it does come with a single button foot switch. Um nice and durable foot switch nothing really uh wrong with that at all no complaints and then you're going to have your resonance knob which controls your low end frequency so um 
when I first turned this amp on, I was like cranking the low end up and I was like, man, I'm really not getting that much. And then I, you know, turned around to the back and this was like all the way down. So I turned that up and it really woke the bottom end on this amp up and really had that nice solid sound. Um, and I, I'm really loving that feature. And then you have your ohm selection. So you can do 16, eight or four ohms. Obviously ohms is a whole subject on its own. I'm still kind of figuring it all out. I've been watching a bunch of videos. It can be a little complicated, but as long as you match everything up and do the right thing, you won't have any issues. I pulled the back of my cab off just to figure everything out and to uh, make sure everything was on the right settings. And uh, 8 ohms was the best setting for my setup. And then you're going to have your uh, speaker output. So basic settings. Now, as far as the tubes inside... Uh, it is equipped with two EL84 output tubes and then four ECC83S preamp tubes. Uh, pardon me if I'm not saying all this correctly. I'm reading out of the book right now, but it's, like I said, tube amp is a totally new world to me. So as far as pronunciation of the tube names, uh, I might not be saying it right, but... So basic specs of this thing, uh, if you want to know more, you can go on EVH's website. You'll get all the specs you need to know, uh, but I'm really loving all the specs about this thing and uh, couldn't be happier as far as all the features. And like I said, that whole quarter power mode is probably my favorite thing for sure. And obviously, I mean, the LEDs, man, come on. Who doesn't like nice, cool lights? So real quick, we'll do a little amp demo. Like I said, it's not going to be a dialing in a tone it's more of a just to see how all the frequencies respond and we're just going to mess around a little bit so don't bite my head off saying you know your tone sucks or anything because we're not even dialing in a tone and you're probably listening through this through an iphone anyway so uh we'll do a little sound demo so you can get the gist of it and uh yeah let's get started with that
right, that's it for this video, guys. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for some cool videos. We're going to do a bunch of projects coming up. Uh, there was a vote between the Schecter and the Flying V. I think we're going to change something up a little bit, and uh, we're just going to do a bunch of projects and just alternate back and forth uh, between different guitar each week or maybe do multiple videos a week. Uh, so I think it'd be cool that way. I want to do something with the NK and then I have the Flying V and I also have a Schecter. So I think we, if we can do all of them and just alternate through all the videos and just each project, I think it'd be cool. Uh, that way everyone gets a little bit of what they want. So uh, definitely appreciate you guys and uh, thanks for watching.